Hi guys and welcome to Biscuits Told to War. This is Biscuits giving you another how-to video. This video was initially supposed to go out on Monday, but I wasn't actually happy with the, the video I'd made. I'd actually made about several videos on that same day, and by the time it came to doing this one, uh, my voice just sounded a bit drowsy and a bit tired. So I thought I'd redo the video. Um, this video is all about having showing you how to mod individual units. Now the previous videos I've put up, it shows you how to unlock certain units for certain factions. So basically you can bring Spartans for the Julii army, you can bring a Sacred Bands for the Julii army. Basically you're able to bring more units to different factions. With this actual video I'm going to show you how to actually modify and actually how to change some of the actual individual units. So for example if you cast your memory back when I made that video which shows one slinger taking on 4,000 Spartans or showing you how the Spartans going into Studo, this video will actually show you how to do it. Now it's not going to show you how to do every single variation because there's absolutely thousands of variations that you can do. But hopefully it will give you a good idea of actually how to do it and it might give you the confidence to go out there and try it yourself. What I will say though is if you do make this modification it won't save it so that you can play it online. If you make this modification, you can do it against the computer, but then if you do want to bring this modified army online, often Game Spy or Game Ranger won't actually allow you to do that because effectively you're modifying the actual hardcore data on the actual units. And I think it's fairly smart that it can work out when you've done that. So this is really just for custom battles at the end of the day, but it's a bit of fun. Uh, it's always nice to try and spice it up, and especially you can almost create your own type of specialised units. Another thing that I would say, if you make a lot of variations to your file, you'll notice when you try and start up the game it may not work, and that's basically because either the alteration that you've made, the game won't run, or secondly, you might have put a space in the actual data file or made an alteration that you weren't aware of. So it's really imperative that with this modification that you do, you make a backup copy of this export DESCR unit folder because that's what you're going to be using to make all these modifications. So if I start from the very beginning, if you bring up your Rome Total War file um, and then you go to data Let's quickly expand this and if you scroll down towards the very bottom the file that I've been talking about in my previous videos and the file that we're going to be editing again is the export-descr-unit folder. So this is the folder, this little file here that you need to make a backup. If you don't make a backup and it goes wrong what you've got to do is just basically reinstall Rome Total War. So it's a bit of a palaver so before you do anything make a backup of this. So this folder, we've looked at certain things in it, uh, changing the ownership of certain units. What we're going to do now is actually look at the rest of this f file to tell you exactly what it's all about. Now the first part of this file is basically a little contents. Now it says, if we scroll down to a certain unit, so if I find an urban cohort, for example, There we go. So you'll see, if I get this urban cohort, for example, it says type, type of unit, a dictionary, don't really need to worry about that. The category is infantry unit, type is heavy. Now the rest of these files here, this is what you can play about with. So you could play about with the voice, it's got medium one, you could change that to light one, you could change that to heavy one, whatever you want to do. This little thing here says Roman, Roman Praetorian Cohort 2. Now this is the actual um, figurine for that unit. So what you could do is that you could change that. So for example, um, this unit here, the Iceni or Arcani, you could select that, go to copy, 
and then paste that in there. So instead of having a, an urban cohort soldier for your urban cohort, you'd have a Roman Arsini. Uh, so it's, you can play about with little things like that. Um, the next thing it will tell you about is the, the officer. So sometimes they will have a, a standard or centurion for certain units. And if they do, they'll be labeled there. Then the next thing you've got is attributes. And now this will tell you basically what this unit can do. So attributes, this one says C fearing, um, firing even. That means that this unit can go onto ships. It can hide in a forest. It can snap and otherwise dig tunnels and it's hardy. But what you can do is add on additional attributes if you wanted to. So the additional attributes, to give you an example, if I pull up this little file, you've got things like a uh, Cantabrian Circle, Can Run Amok, Frightened Foot, um, Mercenary Unit, so if we wanted it to have um, run amok, you could do that. It's not really going to be any benefit though, but you could put frightened foot. So you'll notice that when you scroll through the different units on this file, you'll see a lot of the barbarian units have this trait, frightened foot. Basically means that they can frighten other infantry units around them. So you might want to add that in to your attributes. The next thing you've got is uh, formation. So it tells you what type of formation this unit will do. You don't need to worry too much about these numbers here, the one, two, two, three, and four, but these ones here will tell you about the formation. So you could actually have your unit square, horde, or you could have phallax, or even wedge. So I'm not sure if it would work, but you could put wedge formation for your urbans. Now it may be that the wedge formation trait only works for cav units, if that's the case, when you load Rome, Rome Total War up, it may not work. If that's the case, then you know that you can't use the wedge formation for the urban cohorts. But, you know, as I say, there's so many different variations uh, that you can make. I haven't done every single one. Some of them work, some of them don't work. Uh, the next thing we've got here is stat health. Now, stat health uh, basically is the hit points. Now, I'm not 100% sure how a hit point works. I believe it's to do with the amount of arrows or um, damage it can take. So you'll notice that some units, like a general's armoured bodyguard, will have a hit point of 2, or Spartans will have hit point of 2. Um, but this urban uh, just has a hit point of 1. But you could always amend that if you wanted to too. The next thing below is the actual details of the unit's primary weapon. So, now this part gets a bit complicated, so what I've done here, on this side of my screen, I've actually copied and pasted the very top part of this file, because the very top part of this file acts as a contents or a dictionary. It tells you exactly what each trait does. So it's really useful, uh, so you can work out what the, uh, the primary weapon is, and what the, the ability is and therefore you can alter that ability so you can make it a stronger attack a stronger charge a stronger peeler uh, a stronger amount of armor etc so um, you can basically mess about with these options here so you can see that the attack is 18 and if you charge it gives you an extra attack by three so if you walk, someone attacks you or you walk into them, the attack status will be 18. But if you charge into them, your attack will go from 18 to 21. So there you go. That's why you want to charge into somebody to get that charge bonus to give you the extra attack. Um, and then if you scroll down here, you'll see a thing called stats charge distance. Now what this basically means is that you need to be a certain distance away from your attacking unit to basically run and get that charge bonus. So if you're standing right next to that unit that you want to attack, basically you can't build up enough momentum, enough charge to actually get that additional attack bonus. So you know it's stuff like that that you learn from actually playing about with these uh, data folders. 
Um, another thing that is really handy is stat heat. Now, if you play in the desert or you play in the grassy flatlands, if you're running around the desert, some units will tire quicker than other units. And that's basically because of this trait, the stat heat. So you notice that, for example, the Roman Arcani, this one here, it will tire less quickly in the desert compared to the urban cohorts. Now that may be because the urban cohort's got more armor, it's got a heavier clobber that it's taking around. But of course you can amend that trait to make sure that it doesn't tire in the desert. The next thing you've got is the, this is really beneficial, this thing tells you about their morale. Now you'll see that the urban cohort is 12, so it's got a high morale than the actual arcana, which is 10. You'll notice that the urban cohort is disciplined, whilst the arcana is normal. You notice the urban cohort is highly trained and the arcana is untrained. So that basically means that you'll be in a better formation with the urban cohorts than you will do with the arcana. And basically means that their morrow is going to be higher, so it's going to make it harder to route that unit compared to the arcana because the morrow is lower. So it's a little things like that that you can amend. Now I've given you really the basics of it, so what you could do is basically play about with the, the folder, mess about with it. So a la Blue Peter style, I'll show you what I've just been messing about with just before I made this video. We've got the Roman Gladiator uh, Velite. So what I've done, I've amended it so that it can now hide anywhere. If you look on the attributes, it's now very hardy. I've increased its uh, attack from about 40 to 50. I've attacked its charge bonus from about 3 to 50. So its attack fighting capability is going to be 10 times stronger than what it used to be. I've increased its uh, discipline and its morale. And the charge distance, what I'll do, uh, is at 40. So if I need to get a decent charge, I need to be running from a decent distance. But equally, I could put Testudo as a formation if I wanted to. I could put Phalex as a formation. Now just a little hint, uh, I've done this before with the, the Roman Triarii. Now a Roman Triarii unit is a spear unit, but it can't get into a phalanx formation. But what I did do when I was playing about with this before, I actually managed to get that Triarii unit to get into a phalanx formation, which makes it 10 times better in killing other pike units and cav units. So um, I'll see if I can find that and basically get that amended because um, that's a, quite interesting to show you and then I'll load up the actual game and uh, I'll actually show the units actually um, at it show exactly what they can do um, so there's the Triarii what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to uh, Formation and add in the, the, the Phalanx Formation and I'll save it And then what I'm going to do now is just load up Rome Total Wall. It's take me two moments. Okay, so what I've done, I've created my two armies. I've got some uh, Triarii to show you the, uh, the Phalanx formation. And I've got some uh, Velite Gladiators just to show you what I've done. And then I'm going up against, we've got four Urban Cohort and four Praetorian Cav. So uh, hopefully my little modifications that I've made should be quite an interesting match. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start the battle off. Get my guys into a, a decent formation. Okay, so you notice that my Velite gladiators here, they're all crouching down because I've given them the ability to hide anywhere. 
It won't work for the general because you can't hide the general, but that's, as you can see, interesting. And the next thing you noticed with these triarii, no longer they've just got little basic spears and no longer are they just going to be a cheap spear unit. Because I've given them the phalanx formation, you notice that they can now do this with their spears and it's going to make them 10 times better compared to what they used to be. So uh, let's have a look and see what the other computer does. I'm just going to triple speed it. Might attempt a phalanx charge of my uh, triarii units. What I'm going to do, my velites, I'm just going to charge them right in. Now, these guys got a nice little charge bonus that I've really managed to soup up for them. So this should be quite devastating. Put these guys into phalanx formation. There we go. So you can see these guys are in phalanx formation, just munching through these cav units, nice and simple. And you can see my velites, you know, they're absolutely creaming these urban cohorts. Get these guys to run around the side. Hopefully should start to route these guys. There we go, you can see. Made short work of those. And then you see my Truarii, you know, like a hedgehog basically. The way that the a decent phalanx should be like. Not the, the basic one that uh, the kind people of Creative Assembly decided to give us. You know, there's no way that these Praetorian cohorts can munch through them. There we go. And that's game over. So, hopefully guys, that's something new there for you. I know this video is a bit longer than most ones, uh, but hopefully that teaches you something new there. And once you've actually done these alterations, what you need to do is go back, which I'll show you in a second, if you bear with me two moments. So once you've made all these alterations, what you need to do is actually go back to where your unaltered uh, file is. So the one you've made a backup on. And then once you, I've always got mine saved in this little folder here. Let's exit out of Rome. So the unaltered version that you've got, again, just get that and you just drag it into your data folder. It'll ask you, do you want to replace it? And you click yes. It basically puts the game back to how it used to be. And therefore the altered ver units that you've got will no longer be viewable. But it means that you can now go back online and it won't have any effect. Now, some sometimes when you make these alterations, you'll find that the game won't load. That's because the alteration that you've done is maybe it's too much for the game to handle or it's corrupted the file too much. So just do it small alterations at a time. Have some fun. Um, make Maybe make a creative video. Give your slingers the uh, ability to have flame shots like I did in my first video. Give your Spartans the ability to, for stu to studio. Just go for it. Give it a go. So if you hope, hopefully that's something new for you. If you, this video has been any benefit for you, found it interesting at all, please do like, please subscribe, give a little thumbs up, pass it on to your friends, and hopefully it's something new for you. So this is Biscuit signing out, wishing you all the best, and thanks once again for your time and for checking out my video and channel. Bye now.